So the bus adventures continue. This time, though, it was 17 hours <laughs> to a place called Airly Beach. And to make matters worse on this lovely bus ride, three in the morning, two guys decided to get into a scrap and had the police called. Um, yeah, yeah, that was fun. So after getting no sleep, we ended up in Early Beach, which is the sort of landing point for the next tour of sorts, is the Wit Sundays. So these are sort of back to back with Fraser. A lot of people do them both. And the Wit Sundays is like a catamaran tour because the Wit Sundays are like a chain of islands off the coast and uh is way more laid back, but like you sleep on the boat, you chill on the boat. Really cool, really cool. A lot more low-key. There are some party boats you can take, but I've heard some uh, interesting stories. <laughs> I just, it's it's not PG. But yeah, I, I enjoyed it. One cool thing about this trip in particular is you get to do a lot of like snorkeling. And because it's still a part of the Great Barrier Reef, you get to see all of the coral and like the wildlife there. And because it's a chain of islands, they're more protected than the Great Barrier Reef that you would traditionally see out like in the ocean. Um, so it's like really well preserved and yeah, it's just, it's remarkable. So after swimming with fishies and kicking some girl's GoPro into the ocean, we we're headed to Magnetic Island. Again, Magnetic Island, super chill place. It's like this little island. It's not a whole lot to do. Um, you can rent like these little cars and drive around. Again, just a place where you chill out, party at night. Like that's, <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of theme here. But no, it's pretty cool. And they have like, uh, with the hostel I stayed at was also like a wildlife reserve where you can like hold koalas. So I got to do that, which is pretty neat. Okay, now for the exciting part of the trip where I got to do all of the adrenaline activities. So this is where I sky dove, dive, dove, and bungee jumped for the first time. You make me better than I've ever been. Higher off the ground. And yeah, I'm sure you make a few mistakes, but I won't let you down. I've got this heart of steel for you. That's what you do. You give me hands up. Uh, I think if you were to choose between one or the other go skydiving i think it's a more cool thing to say you've done and the feeling after is you're just so like elated you're like you're like shaking tell everyone what do you think oh that's it? fucking awesome you should do it cool, eh? <laughs> oh it's so cool do it again oh 100 congratulations <laughs> man thanks but bungee jumping is terrifying <laughs> Like, like, take it from me, I wasn't really that frightened by skydiving, and that was like 10,000 feet in the air, but bungee jumping 50 meters was the scariest thing I've ever done in my life, like, for sure. Because I think people don't realize, like, skydiving, you got some dude, like, hugging you, you know? And he just throws you out the plane, and you're just there for the ride, where, like, <laughs> where when you're bungee jumping, you're, like, standing, <laughs> standing on the platform, <laughs> like this. <laughs> You know, and then they're like, all right, you know, whenever you're ready, and you're like, fuck. And you have to, you have to be the one to jump. So if you like adrenaline, if that doesn't do it for you, I don't, I don't know what will. But yeah, a little fun fact. <laughs> when I did this, I did eight jumps in a day because uh, the Welcome to Travel C CEO, are you the, <laughs> the main guy at Welcome to Travel, Adam, said in his thing that he did seven. And for some reason in like my, my stupid brain, I was like, I'm going to do eight. <laughs> so yeah, I did, I did eight jumps that day. And to just make things, you know, fun, I did eight different jumps. So I did one where you're just doing the standard. I did one where you're, you're, uh, you're, you're back facing. I did one where you have to grab uh, a bar and hang from a bar. I did one where they have you by the belt with a rope and they lean you like this over over the edge 
I'll keep you back in these nice and straight, guys. Here we go, mate. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> and then for the last one, I paid like an extra 30 bucks or whatever. And I had them like on the platform 50 meters up. There's like a roof and you can do one where, you know, there's one where you grab a bike and you bike off the roof. Or there's one where they put like a like a chest harness and you can like sprint off the roof. And I was like, yeah, I want to do that one. All right, the last jump. The last one, eight. eight. Number eight. We're up on the roof this time. You want to show everyone what you're going to do here? Oh. <laughs> so after getting my adrenaline for a lifetime, we we're on to Cairns. Again, theme continues. Beach club like <laughs> I got on mind but yeah you have to remember it's like backpackers like that is what everyone wants to do I understand again personally just you know I like the beach it's not a club in person but during that trip I scuba dove dived for the first time uh, which was pretty cool that was one thing I wasn't a fan of to be honest um, even though it was the Great Barrier Reef which is like a cool thing to say uh, just the feeling, you know, of scuba diving and everything you have to do to get it right, where you have to like, you know, equalize and being underwater like that is a very helpless feeling for me. Some people feel free, ironically enough. I felt helpless. Uh, and I was only like four meters, five meters down. I just wasn't a fan. I'll have to try it again, maybe with more coaching, but just not for me. But regardless, it was still, you know, super beautiful. The Great Barrier Reef is, is amazing and all the wildlife even even if you know it's sort of sad seeing what uh what's being done to it but yeah uh, and the other thing i went to go see during that trip was the karanda railway which is like this super old railway that runs from cairns up to this you know town in the mountains where they have a bunch of you know touristy activities and uh i, I enjoyed it i thought it was a pretty neat day you know there's like a wildlife you know observatory sanctuary whatever you want to call it and uh yeah it was, it was pretty enjoyable especially the ride back where you're on this like cable car and you know you can just look for like kilometers around and it's it's just this beautiful lush like rainforest and yeah it's pretty cool after all that we come to the final part of my trip here which was cape tribulation So Cape Tribulation was yet another overnight tour, but this time spent in the Daintree Rainforest, which if you're unaware, is the oldest rainforest in the world. I think you can fact check, but it's like 150 million years old, he said, <laughs> which is pretty remarkable, uh, which predates the Amazon, and it is amazing. So we had another example of an amazing tour guide, Brad, you're a legend. But during that trip, we got to see a bunch of Australian wildlife, um, both during the day and the creepy crawlies you probably don't want to see at night. All in all, again, met tons of people, had an amazing time. And on the final day, woke up for a sunrise. I'm not a morning person, but woke up for a sunrise at like 5 a.m. So that was my trip. I glossed over <laughs> lots of things, obviously. But, uh, you know, those are the sort of main highlights and, and experiences. Yeah, it was just a remarkable, remarkable time. I, I enjoyed you know, every minute of it. So that was, you know, at that point, that was two months spent in Australia. You know, after doing all that moving and living in hostels, like as much fun as it looks on Instagram, uh, I think the reality of it is less fun than people think. Uh, you know, sleeping in like a eight bed with people, you know, either like having sex or drinking at one in the morning, like it gets old and you want, you want your own place. And I needed, I needed money, <laughs> quite frankly, in a job. So I, uh, I flew to Melbourne 
to meet with some of my old friends and to see if I could get a place to rent and a, a job. Um, so those first couple of weeks in Melbourne were a bit tough. I had trouble finding work and a place to rent. There's like a ton of options, but not a lot. Like I went to go see, you know, four or five different places renting wise. And I remember one, it was like a corner in their living room with like a curtain. Um, but I got to meet and stay with a bunch of amazing people through Airbnb and the likes uh and i wouldn't have traded that for anything you know who you are <laughs> thank you for letting me stay with you i really enjoyed it special shout out to oscar long story short i eventually got a place in that same weekend after doing lots of trial shifts they have trial shifts in australia i landed a job at a japanese restaurant called sake on the yara river so having the relief of a place to hang my my stuff and the security of a job i was free to sort of explore melbourne and i think one of the best things was i got to live with an australian who grew up in melbourne or the melbourne area shout out will hope you're doing all right and uh yeah that was amazing because we could share cultural differences and he would take me to markets and places around melbourne and he had a car so we would just drive around and you know i think usually when you do these things your first inclination is to just live with other backpackers or people which often happens because you're on the same boat but getting to live with someone who like knew australia and grew up there was 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 the best um but melbourne's an amazing city i could either just train to work because the transportation system's amazing with the trams and everything or i got like a little skateboard and i would like ride the path on the river to get to work super cool tons of like cafes and restaurants and bars and i really enjoyed living living there but during my time i got to see boxing day cricket the australian open semi-final aussie rules football and just generally, I got to meet like tons of locals and Australians through my job. Like I worked in the heart of the city pretty much right by the theater and, you know, just getting to talk to so many different people. And let me just say, like, I've been serving for a couple of years, by far my favorite people to serve. Like, sorry, Canada, but you just, you know, I think maybe it was because I was Canadian, like I was the foreigner. So they were just like nice to me, but just the sense of humor and everything you know i just i honestly i got treated so well i had like three or four people tell me to like if you're like in this place here's my number <laughs> cut like we'll put you up don't even worry about it it's just like wow like people are so nice a genuine niceness that's what i would say a genuine niceness give you a hard time but you know everyone means well and they'll rib you real good but if you can give it back like uh yeah it's just great people great people but yeah, like all things through this trip, I had my camera with me. I had to take some, you know, street photos and just enjoy, you know, photographing somewhere new. Part of this, I also got to meet North Borders and 7th Era, which if you're into photography, you know, probably about their YouTube channels um, which is cool to meet Mike and Liam and during that day we got to meet a bunch of other photographers and shoot a model and just take photos of the day with a bunch of other like-minded people which was which was pretty wicked but yeah so after living in Melbourne for about three months uh, me and my, my dad was actually planning to come visit me in Melbourne and then we're gonna go fly to New Zealand but as most of you know now that didn't quite happen <laughs> COVID had other plans and things got canceled and it, it was that week in March went from being very uh, normal and being like, oh, this doesn't seem so bad to really serious, like really, really fast. And uh, as soon as Trudeau said, uh, if you're a Canadian, come home, that was it for me. So yeah, even though it was nice, you know, to come home and see family after so long, um, coming home to kind of the context of COVID was weird. And uh, that's where we still are now because <laughs> shit just hasn't changed here anyways. No, but the trip, it was just something, you know, one in a lifetime. And if you have the time and the resources and quite frankly, the privilege to do so, I, I can't recommend it enough. I know it's daunting at first to like leave everything you know behind. But if you're my age, even if you're older and you don't know what you want to do, like 
man, just just go. You, you all your worries go away as soon as you know where you are and like people there are so friendly, man. It's not so different than a lot of places. It's just it's an amazing just an amazing lovely place. The people are awesome. Everyone's so funny. Yeah. I I can't wait to go back. But if you made it this far, thank you. I don't know how long this is. Yeah, I'll leave everything you need to know in the description um below and uh thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and uh and learn something. Some. <laughs> Fuck. Something. <laughs> Anyways, fucking. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>